Emissions from air travel globally account for 3% of all greenhouse gas emissions, making the transition to a low carbon future even more important for this industry. Well, joining us now is Dr. Emma Whittlesey, Executive Director at Griffith University. Emma, welcome. Such a pleasure to have you with us today. Tell me, big question for you here, is it possible to achieve a net zero aviation sector? That's a good question, is it possible? <laughs> I think that's the challenge that we're all trying to work on. And certainly I think the sector governments and you know all around the world are trying to work on this. It's a big challenge. The aviation sector is one of the most difficult to decarbonize. And that's primarily because of the limited number of options and alternatives to get a big plane in the sky takes a lot of fuel, a lot of energy, which is traditionally fossil fuels. So um, there's a big challenge, but there's lots of work being done, lots of strategies and lots of commitment from the sector. Well, talking about those strategies and commitment, you know, most airlines, in fact, almost all airlines that I've looked at say that they are acting on, on climate change. But what does that really mean? What does that level of action actually look like? So the, the, the level varies depending on uh, where you are in the world and depending on which airline you are and what kind of aircraft you fly. So it's, it's pretty variable. But one of the biggest opportunities for smaller airlines with smaller kind of aircraft that do short haul and regional flights. They have um, electric opportunities, hydrogen electric opportunities, and also hybrid as options that are at their feet, if you like. And then things like sustainable aviation fuel are kind of an opportunity for the, those longer haul flights and for those airlines that are doing big international travel. Mm. So, for, so when you do see the airlines that aren't acting perhaps as fast as they should do, who will take the blame for this inaction? I mean, is this action to be blamed on governments around the world? Is it individual corporate uh, sort of responsibility to do more? I think it's everybody's responsibility. And I mean, even those mix of solutions I just touched on, they can cover both sides. That's just really where the technology is right now. So, for, for example, hydrogen solutions lend themselves quite nicely potentially for the future for bigger aircraft so you do have the likes of Airbus and Boeing really concentrating and trying to look at as well as Rolls-Royce on solutions that can help so the industry are really trying to look at this and airlines are looking at it as well there's a lot of work they've been doing for a long time around efficiencies of aircraft to try and get aircraft more efficient so it's not like no work has been done it's just one of the biggest challenges for aviation is is the emissions and to get emissions down means a shift away from fossil fuel mm. and that it is going to take time you know a lot of people commit to the prices for aircraft and the investment kind of lead in for those in terms of you know renewing um, aircraft and flight renewal is long time periods you know you know 30 year plus horizons sometimes so um, and governments are doing work as well there's big commitments globally uh, there's commitments in just recently in Australia for a, a jet zero council to try and bring aviation sector players to do more I think it's just one of the most challenging sectors. Mm. So it just is going to require a lot of input and energy and it really has to happen now. It's not something we can wait. I, I know there's a lot of work happening in the green hydrogen space at the moment and, uh, and clearly that's got some potential for the aviation uh, sector. But of course, you know, along with some of the other technologies, there are issues like the availability of the fuel at scale, uh, the future cost um, of course, that, that goes across the board, I think, and also um, supply infrastructure at airports. So how close are we to solving the big issues around things like green hydrogen? So green hydrogen and sustainable aviation fuel both require big amounts of investment. There's big challenges around that scalability, around the supply that will be required. So in terms of production and supply, but also around that cost. And that will take time, you know, like any new innovation and new fuel um, for those prices to come down. But it is anticipated for hydrogen that it could be definitely an affordable option. Here's how a hydrogen-powered regional airliner works. The hydrogen comes in using modular capsules, eliminating the need for a whole new fueling infrastructure and also speeding up the fueling process. The liquid hydrogen gets gasified using excess heat from the powertrain and fed to the fuel cells along with ambient air flowing through a compressor. The fuel cells take hydrogen and air and produce electricity and water. Water is the only waste product. And the electricity is used to power an electric motor which turns the propeller. The fuel cell and motor generate quite a bit of heat. 
Some of this heat is useful, but the rest we eliminate using microtube radiators, the same technology used on Formula One race cars. What do you see the timing being like? I mean, you know, if we talk about a net zero aviation sector as a whole, like we started off our conversation in discussing, what sort of timing could we expect this to happen in? So there are test flights happening at the moment for aircraft across the world if you're particularly interested around um, hydrogen electric. So there's been electric flights as well that have run on battery electric um, solutions. Uh, we have also, SAF has been used as well, sustainable aviation fuel in aircraft. So they're all emerging technologies. Uh, I think it's going to be a watch this space. It's very hard to kind of do the crystal ball, but I think everybody's hoping that certainly by 2030, a lot of these new um, fuels and innovations will be in flights that are hopefully available commercially. Mm. And some have got very ambitious um, years. So using years like 2026, that some uh, aircraft and powertrain developers are saying that their technology will be out there and available. So uh, that feels a little ambitious, but let's see. I, I hope that they reach that goal. What are you most excited about? I'm most excited about seeing the change. I think it's really great that a lot of collaborations are happening worldwide to try and make this happen. And those collaborations need new actors. So we are going to need a transformation of the aviation sector in terms of how it operates and the thinking how you know those aircraft and um, airlines can operate and the connections with airports and new fuel producers. So there's a lot of opportunity. I think I'm most excited about that opportunity and um, seeing these new actors and players coming together with real drive and passion to try and mm. make a change and to try and help us achieve zero emission aviation. Because if we don't, and alongside, you know, there are very real questions about how we manage supply and demand. You know, how do we do demand management? How do we think about behavior change and, and not flying so much?